We knew that um, Alzheimer's disease, in fact, is more uh, prevalent in older women than men. And that's not just because there are more older women. Women uh, seem to be more vulnerable to it. And one of the reasons is because of estrogen depletion after the menopause. And many studies have found, especially with animal models, that um, estrogen has a very protective effect on the brain. And studies where they looked at a woman who had their ovaries removed at a young age, if they took estrogen, they had less cognitive decline. But a more recent study, was conducted several years ago, suggested that in women either who had Alzheimer's disease or women with, uh, at risk of Alzheimer's, in fact, some of them, uh, particularly women that were more likely to develop vascular dementia, may show more decline with estrogen. So what we wanted to look at in our trial was uh, women who either had normal memory function for their age or uh, a mild impairment. So we wanted to look at a group of women. Uh, we excluded women who had dementia or Alzheimer's or severe memory problems. What we wanted to, to see is if these women who had normal to mildly impaired memory if they took a specific form of hormone replacement therapy, if over a two-year duration, if this could alter the normal decline that these women would have experienced. So we're talking women who were maybe on average 75 years of age. And as we all get older, especially after menopause for women, there is a normal age-related decline. So, and that's particularly evident in verbal memory. So we may forget people's names, we forget words, we forget lists, and that is normal aging. So we wanted to see if estrogen could affect that normal decline in these women. The way that we examined um, what we call uh, in the study trial our outcome measure, or the way that we uh, evaluated the benefits of estrogen, is we used a delayed verbal recall test. So and in this test, what you do is you read uh, a list of 16 words to the woman. She has to recall them, and you do that five times. And then you read another list of 16 unrelated words. Then after that, after she's been asked to recall those, then you say, remember those words that we ran over five times? <clears throat> now I'd like you to recall as many of those as you can. But now this measure is, uh, has been well developed. It's uh, a clinical measure that's that's often used by, especially by a clinical neuropsychologist. And it has norms and it has to be specially administered uh, by somebody who's trained to read the words at a particular rate. So it's not as though we can go out and get this on the internet and do it and say, oh, well, I have a problem or I don't. It really should be administered in a clinical context and interpreted in a clinical context. What we found is that if we looked at those women who had normal memory at the beginning of the study before they started estrogen for the two-year duration. Um, we compared them to a placebo group, that is women who received a dummy pill that didn't have any estrogen in it. And we had another group of women who had um, below memory for their age at the beginning of the trial. We compared them to placebo. And in fact, the women with normal memories at the beginning of the study um, did not show the normal age-related decline that their placebo group did. Whereas what we found is those women who had below memory performance before the study began, they didn't show any benefit from estrogen compared to their placebo group. At the beginning, before we started the trial, uh, we were aware that one of the forms of progesterone, because in hormone replacement therapy, there's a combination of an estrogen and a progesterone. And the form of progesterone that was used in the Women's Health Initiative study, in fact, there's lots of studies and literature showing that it antagonizes the beneficial effects of estrogen. So we deliberately chose a, a different form of progesterone that's known, in fact, to also have a protective effect on the brain. And we also uh, chose um, a particular form of estrogen, which is molecularly similar to the estrogen that will be found uh, in premenopausal women. So we think that was an important aspect of this study, um, wherein we did find the positive 
benefits of estrogen. So it helps us understand one of the potential causes of a disease like Alzheimer's disease. And it also, it opens the door. I think the previous study, the Women's Health Initiative, which was in many ways, uh, had a lot of flaws. Um, it basically closed the door to a lot of people because of the concerns of uh, hormone replacement, where I think studies sort of showing uh, where in fact it may have some benefit and the particular role, um, leaves the door open to more research and just a better understanding of how it may in fact affect the brain. The implications for women is they may, especially if they do have uh, risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, um, and they may not necessarily have any memory problems themselves, but may have some concern because the risk factors are present, they may want to go and discuss this with their family doctor and uh, look at the pros and cons of being on hormone replacement. Women who are currently on hormone replacement, again, may wish to discuss this with their family doctors. There are risks to estrogen, and with any drug that you take, you have to look at the risks and benefits. And in terms of the general health care system, again, it just makes us aware that there's potentially um, another form of treatment for um, a very serious neurodegenerative disorder such as Alzheimer's that could be there. But we can never say it's there yet, and, and it just may make um, funding agencies more receptive to research like this.